It's Reddit, reddit.com slash r slash StarCraft. Bam, there it is. All right, so let's actually see. We need to be on the front page. Yeah, like, let's make sure right that's, now. that's occurring. Let's see, and it appears as though, hey, we are it's on the front 20, page. number 20, number 20 on the front page of Reddit right now, so you should go help us out, get it to the top. 100% anyway, upvote ratio, you guys should continue that! Let's see what's going on here in the lobby. It looks like all of our players, or at least some of our players are ready. Oh, Axlav. Complexity tweeted about us as well, so ah, cool. thank you to Complexity. Axlav and Strifecrow are ready to go. Oh, and of course, Katz and Druby are both on Complexity, so they're representing the team here. Not just assassins, but Complexity in general. And All right. this map is going to be High Orbit. This is one of the Blizzard ladder maps from long ago. I am a little more familiar with this map than Citadel of Gaia, but here we go. Katz starting as the Blue Zerg. Uh, looks like he and Druby actually switched blue and light blue. So <laughs> Druby is the light blue Terran down in the bottom left corner. And Druby and Katz are actually up one game to zero already after winning IC Cup Citadel of Gaia in that first match. Mm -hmm. Axlav going to be the purple Terran. Normally he is a Protoss player, mm -hmm. but this time he is being Terran to complement his teammate EG Strifecrow, this yellow Zerg here up in the top right of high orbit. So here we are, guys. And so we have two Terran vs. Zerg teams that are left in the tournament. And then there is Subsun, which is the Terran and Protoss combination. A little more macro-oriented team of Optic Zero and Dignitas Select. And uh, I remember there were some rumblings yesterday where they were like, ah, we need more shared base maps, things like that, so we can get more macro-oriented games so people just aren't Terran vs. Terran and Zerg. So I'm curious to see how this works out. Uh, looks like we're going to have a nice gas there for Strife Crow. He's going to put that down and allow Axlov to use that so Axlov can commit all of his resources to starting this wall as soon as is physically possible, and it won't delay Strife Crow all that much in all reality. That is interesting. All the gas sharing is an aspect of 2v2 that I've never really seen before of doing random 2v2s with complete strangers. It's, mm -hmm. it's a very cool tactic that uh, I didn't realize was so effective. We've seen actually, I believe, Assassins and Team EG and Subsuns all making use of that at various points mm -hmm. in these games. And I'm really curious. I wish there was something in the Blizzard overlay that would let us see resources traded or something like that. Because yeah. I really don't know we, we have no way of knowing as observers unless we're just watching those mineral counts like a hawk to see exactly when uh, resources are traded. I wish it would just be a tiny pop-up somewhere or that, a tab. Yeah, that or when you see, you know, um, you know how much time you've been in control of your particular units, whatever the case may be. Um, because frequently players will also give control to their other teammates. I'm really curious to see how this plays out this game, though. Xlov and Strife Crow are going ahead and walling as quickly as they can. Looks like we're going to have another 150 mineral structure being put down. Just a second. He has the resources. There's a factory. There we go. Um, but this still leaves a gap in the wall, and we already see Lings coming out for cats, and there's going to be Hellions once again very, very quickly for Druby. It looks, though, that Axlov is doing the exact same thing. It's just going to take a little bit of time, so I don't know if they're going to remain defended. The wall is in place now. There is a bunker for defense. But it's still going to be a pretty scary attack that comes out of Cats and Druby. I do believe that on this map we saw the assassins yesterday attacking that uh, destructible debris very quickly, and it looks like Axlav and Strifecrow really aren't prepared for it just yet. There's an Overlord nearby, but if Cats and Druby do that uh, sort of two racks fast Ling attack again, well, they aren't, but <laughs> they they would be susceptible to it. Druby mm -hmm. is getting that starport up. He's got two Hellions on the way now. Hellions take absolutely forever to break through those armored debris and destructible rocks and things, so they are going to be doing some sort of frontal attack, and I'm wondering if they, uh, I mean, they did just see the wall, cats did see it, I'm wondering if they're just going to wait, try and expand, continue teching up, and wait for a much larger force instead of that usual harassment force that we see with the Hellions and Lings. I would imagine we do have the Roach Warren already coming down for Cat, so he is going to attack at the very least. And Strife Crow going to one base lair for the time being. He did try to expand last game. Not really going to have that luxury because it forces you out into the middle of the map to take either the gold expansion in front of your base or expose yourself and take down your own destructible debris, things like that. So uh, we do have one Ling there for Strife Crow making its way around. It's going to try and get a good scout, make sure there's no other um, bases around, and Druby puts a quick end to that with his. Italians. But back here for Axlov, 
He does have his starport up and running. He's adding a tech lab to that. Druby has added one to his as well. His Banshee is actually almost complete, and we do have one base infestation pit coming out for Strife Grow. That's kind of interesting, the one base infestation pit. Usually that's not enough gas to support a huge force, but uh, that Banshee from Druby is not going to have Cloak. Axelive is making his own Banshee now, and he also is not researching Cloak just yet. Druby is going to arrive eventually. He's got still a long way to go over to... Uh, Axe Labs of Maine, but there's no real anti-air here at all. Um, that Banshee coming out of the starport means that Vikings are not, and there's really no Marines around. Uh, he's making one at a time out of that barracks, but really Hellions and Zerglings are the bulk of uh, Team EG's forces right now, so the Banshee could rack up quite a lot of kills here. Yep, absolutely. The Banshee is just setting itself out to the side. Here it comes! And Axlov is not really prepared for this. Here he comes with a few Marines, but of course, with good control, Druby is going to be able to sit back against those all day. He does lose quite a bit of health, though. Now he finally kills two of the Marines. I think there was one more around. No, maybe he did kill all three of those, but he is racking up the kills. Seven kills, eight kills, all at the same time. Cats and Druby are about ready to bust through this destructible debris on the right-hand side. And there's really not all that much left here. Strife Crow, he is putting up an evolution chamber, and he has that infestation pit down. Two infestors finally start started at the moment, but Druby has already done so much damage, 13 kills, and no response to That's this whatsoever. Ridiculous. A ridiculous amount of kills for one Banshee with no cloak, 14 kills, and now the Roaches and Hellions are inside of Strife Pro's base, all those drones lining up, actually A-moving into the Hellions, now they're trying to run away, but of course there's uh, nowhere to go, all those drones just got totally torched, Strife Pro setting at only 13 supply, and this is just more of the same from that first game, X-Lab and Strife Pro GG out, and Team Assassins. Complexity Cats and Complexity Druby taking a 2-0 lead in this best of five winners final so far. They've only need one more win to uh, actually head into the grand finals in a very, very pretty position. Yeah, absolutely. And every game that we've seen of them so far, they've won just convincingly. I mean, they had a couple of games where they tried to play the macro game, and um, teams that were a little bit more prepared for macro strategies did really well. But, man... That was... Oh, thank you very much for setting me to busy. <laughs> that, that, that would have been bad had I gotten some sort of a message, but that's okay. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, absolutely excellent play. Can't wait to see what they offer us here on Tarsonis 